Welcome, everybody. I'm Mark David, founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating. And here we are in the Psychology of Eating podcast. And I'm here today with Tess. Welcome, Tess. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad you're here. And you're in New Zealand. Yes, I am. Born and bred? Yep, born and bred. Been here all of my life. How old are you, Tess? I'm 25 years old. All right. Well, a brave young woman for doing this and and being willing to jump in. So if you could just wave your magic wand and truly get whatever you can possibly get from this session and, and what you want in terms of your relationship with food, what would that be? Oh, I just want to trust myself more. I want to feel um, a lot of faith in myself and my choices rather than the fear that I feel I've been taking on a lot of the time Um, and just recognize my personal control and ability to meet my needs because I think when I was a child, I felt a lot of um, challenges of just feeling out of control. And I think that now that I am 25, I'm able to step into more responsibility now and just make sure that I can recognize my mind-body connection with food so that hunger is satisfied and I don't feel like I have to worry as much about food anymore. I just, I don't want to have to worry about my weight or fear that I'm ever going to be able to not control the things that are within my control the way that I might have felt when I was younger. Yeah. So, so these days when your relationship with food is not working for you, what does that look like on the most mm. practical level? Really compulsive eating habits, um, always wanting to have the larger options um, so that I can feel like I have full choice. I feel like I always want to give myself full choice on whatever's going. I never want to be left out or I never want to feel like there's not enough for me Um, but I think that instead of letting my hunger decide my food choices my brain or my mental aspects are like choosing everything for me so I I want to be able to listen to my body more and let it be more instinctual rather than compulsive. Mm -hmm. Are you looking to lose weight? Yeah I'd I'd like to lose weight um my partner and I want to start having or trying for a child. So I'd like to lose weight with the health, sort of my health aspects in mind, um, just to have a safer pregnancy and just to be kind of confident in my body. Um, Like I know I can't control everything that happens, especially with things like pregnancy and childbirth, but I think we've got time now before we get started that I just want to feel like I've done my best for myself and then for my future children in terms of my body and how I carry myself. Oh, that's so beautiful. So how much, how much weight would you like to lose? Oh, it's complicated. Um, Honestly, I feel like I'd be happy with, it sounds dramatic, but like 20 kilos is probably how much, Um, at the least that I'm carrying overweight, but maybe 20 to 30 kilos would be good to just um, make me feel lighter. Yeah. I toss between, like, I want it, but then I feel guilty for wanting it, or I feel like I haven't haven't made it happen yet. So I almost feel like, am I even allowed to want to lose weight? You know, it's a complicated relationship with the actual weight loss aspects. Sure. Because I want to be like, Oh, you know, like um, I want to feel like I can love myself at any weight and be like really body positive. But then there's an aspect of me that knows that it's just really heavy to carry excess weight and it it's just exhausting. So, yeah, I'm sort of in two minds. Mm. So in a typical week, if you find that there's just something that's driving you to eat more than a party you wants to eat. Mm. What happens in those moments? Like, are you enjoying the food when you're eating it? Do you feel like you're there and you're present? Do you, uh, do you, do you feel like you check out a little bit? Like what's your experience Mm -hmm. when you feel like you look back on it when, and you said, Oh, I ate too much. What was your experience while you were eating too much? 
Um, like euphoria, probably. Um, I think it's just that relaxing aspect, that overeating and the feeling of excitement of getting food that would not normally be like sort of off limits food or going out for food that I hadn't expected. It's, it's like exciting and it's like euphoric. It's almost like a drug addict, you know, um, yeah. it feels like that compulsion or that addiction. It just relieves my stress. And I feel like it is definitely a cover up for the anxiety that I feel in any situations. I think I notice it more, in my work day or when I'm at work, but it's also when I come home from work, it's like the reward of going through stressful situations or like managing things. I think it's my, it's my little like happy place reward, which is yeah, kind of, it's upsetting, but I think I can see why that would be my response because it does go back a long way into my childhood and, and what food meant to me back then. So I think it's just carrying on that same habit um, instead of letting meant, myself. So what food meant for you back then in childhood, how would you say that in, in two sentences or less? When I was younger, what food meant for me was? My first word was pantry as a child. So I think I was food focused because it was one of the most relaxing parts of my life was when I was getting to eat. So I don't know if that says a lot for my childhood. Um, it was, yeah, it felt like the only way I could have a sense of control was to try and control my food. So mm -hmm. I guess it meant um, like a sense of personal control or feeling um, like I have a choice in what's going on. I think that's probably what it meant for me. Mm. And... You know, you have such great insights into yourself. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering, how did you get there? How did you, how did you get from oh. your childhood to where you are right now? Did you have help? Did you have counselors? Oh, it's been a long journey. No counselors would ever take me. Like I'd always go for counseling and the people wouldn't turn up or something would happen and, and the appointment would be canceled. Or I went to see one lady for one appointment and she said to me, that she no longer had any space at any time that I'd be free from then until the future. So I've always tried to reach out. I've got a naturopath that I really love and appreciate. And we kind of catch up every couple of years just for a chat. It's more about like, she helped me with the emotional aspects of my life. And it was like, oh, you need to move out of home or, you know, you need to like let yourself live and things. So I had help from a naturopath, but I've done a lot of my own studies um, and I'm a very spiritual person. So I've, um, yeah, I've, it's, it's kind of not related, but I have mediumship abilities and I have like a, a lot of a spiritual connection. And um, I think that's what drives me to keep looking deeper and to really have self-awareness and reflection. So, yeah, I think a lot of it has been my own personal studies, but I definitely jumped down the rabbit hole of food and nutrition and I studied and studied and I just got back around to the fact that it's not necessarily even what we're eating most of the time. It's how we're eating and how we're feeling about what, how we're eating. So, yeah, I feel like I've just gone round and round in circles um, with my own study. And I've just come back around to the fact that I just want to have a normal life. So, yeah, I'm just learning how, to, how that looks for me as a person because it's so different for all of us. Sure. So how many times a day would you say that you eat more than you wish you would have? Mm, I think, I think my portion sizes are, well, they had begun to get bigger and bigger, just the more weight that I was carrying because my stomach could fit more food and then the more that I ate the more that I needed so I think overall my portion sizes are generally larger than they need to be um so I guess that's quite regularly but I would say maybe once to twice a day maybe once a day that I'd eat more in a specific meal than what a meal should look like um but it's it's it sways back and forth some days it's not at all and I've got a lot of control but I think I haven't had a, a week or a month where I felt like I was 
completely normal and fine with my eating. So it's definitely regular enough to concern me for sure. Mm -hmm. So would you consider yourself a fast eater, moderate eater, slow eater? Pretty fast, fast, Mm -hmm. moderate to fast. I have tried at times to slow down, but I think it just goes back to the old habits. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And how does your husband feel about your weight? Partner. Um, he loves me and cherishes me and he honestly thinks there's nothing wrong with me. Um, like we're both aware that I'm a curvy woman and it's just lovable. He just loves every aspect of me and he doesn't understand why I get so wound up. He doesn't think that I have an issue at all because he looks at my food habits and he thinks that they're really healthy in comparison to his, like, because he likes to have sugary drinks and, you know, he's, he thinks that I'm really healthy. Um, yeah, he just loves me. Eh? It's just cool. <laughs> That's great. I'm really glad yeah. to hear that. Yeah. Um, just so you know, I'm, I'm just going to bounce around here and ask different questions. And, and mm-hmm. there, there, there's definitely a method to the madness here. Um, what, when's the first time of the day that you eat? Like what time? Um, I guess breakfast, I had been fasting for quite a while, but I found that it just made me more hungry and then more restrictive and binging sort of cycles. So I would just eat breakfast now. Um, it'll be between six and seven in the morning before I start work or on the weekends, it's more relaxed, um, sort of like a brunch on the weekends. But when I'm starting work, it'll probably be around seven o'clock in the morning. What's a typical breakfast for you? Um, I would just have, uh, probably a couple of pieces of toast and some yogurt, um, like some Greek yogurt. Sorry, my screen's timed out. Um, and I, I was having eggs or eggs with mushrooms and sort of an omelet if I'm not having toast or, um, I could have just some, we've got wheat bix cereal over here, which is kind of just like a whole grain cereal with some milk um it's even funny me looking at these habits now because i i'm so afraid of like oh is this good enough is this what you're wanting to hear but it's just my mind just ticks over too much i feel like i need to be more instinctive with it you know yeah i'm i'm just gathering information (laughs) to me there's no good or bad there's what you're doing and Mm. what's going to help you get where you want to go and what doesn't get get you where you want to go so mm. zero good or bad, zero judgment. It's just, yeah. you know, we're just, we're just trying to figure out how to, how to get you where you want to go. And yeah. where you want to go, I know is more than just weight loss. It's the mm-hmm. kind of relationship with food where you have more of your natural weight. Um, yeah. And you're more relaxed around it. So mm. Okay, so that's breakfast. What time do you usually have lunch? Um, between 12 and 1 o'clock, maybe around that time or just after. Is there a snack in between breakfast and lunch? Um, not generally. Okay. Yeah, not, not recently. And you're eating lunch at work? Yeah. What's a typical lunch for you? Um, so I was trying to make... Uh, like a healthy sort of keto lunch. So I was doing like um, some chicken and vegetables or like sausages and vegetables. Um, But quite often I would take one look at that or I'd be stressed at work and then I'd want to go out to the bakery or I'd want to go out and get something sort of like convenience food or fast food. If I was feeling more stressed or if I wasn't like, if someone was in the lunchroom or something, so I'd go out rather than stay in. Um, so it's yeah a lot of the time I was trying to eat like that I think nowadays I just kind of want to like make it simple and just make a sandwich or something I think I was afraid to have bread Um, but then if I was not having bread and then looking at my lunch and just going down the road to the bakery like what's a better option making a sandwich or you know like I think I just need to relax more Mm -hmm. because the habits of being too strict push me to just go and get a pie from the shop or like, you know, go buy like hot chips or something. So it's not ideal, but it does happen if I'm honest about it. So do you have a snack between lunch and dinner? Um, yeah, uh, 
just trying to think. I feel like I don't really have set habits. They kind of change a lot. I'm, yeah, I would just have uh, like a biscuit or a, like a cup of tea or a coffee and a biscuit. Um, yeah, don't really then, have fruit or anything. And then dinners at home. Yeah, so I cook. I cook dinner for myself and my partner. Okay. Most of the time, yeah, seven, six out of seven nights a week. And how? And what's your assessment? Do you think in your mind, oh, I eat a lot for dinner? Mm, yeah, um, like moderate amount. Um, it's interesting because my partner is quite slender, and he gets full after a couple of bites so in comparison to him I would eat quite a lot um but I think I just have a moderate um like a moderate intake yeah anything after dinner no I'm really good at not eating after dinner it's just not my it's not when I eat because <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm at home and I'm relaxed you know so my home life's brilliant and happy and relaxing so I'm really happy not to eat after dinner but we do eat quite a late dinner um, at times so probably between like seven thirty and sometimes nine o'clock it just depends on how much is going on that day mm -hmm. um, we've just bought a house so I've had so much more to do around the home and then um, taking our dog for a walk and things so I tend to fill up my schedule a lot how's your relationship with your parents uh um it <sighs> I had tried really, really hard to form um, a healthy relationship with them and it just hasn't been happening. Um, I guess I can't control them, so I don't have the ability to uh, make everything okay. They're really, um, we had a falling out actually just the 1st of January. So yeah, it's um, complicated with them and I think my partner and his family who we're really close to, they have just given me a lot of support in saying that I can step back from trying to keep the relationship. Um, but I think a lot of the time what it is with them is they love me in ways that um, aren't healthy, but it's only the only way they know how to love. So they use like a financial drive as their currency of love. But for me, I just want them to be there and to be supportive and just to have a relationship with me. So I always reach out. It's kind of like, um, it's emotionally abusive, but it's kind of like the type of relationship that is sometimes it's really good and really fun. Like we did a Thanksgiving dinner this year or the year before to 2020. And it was wonderful. Like we had an awesome dinner. I prepared all this food in our house for them and they came around and we had our dogs playing together and we played games and it was wonderful. And then I went back on the 1st of January and we went to the beach and there was just bickering and it was stressful. And then my dad offered a sum of money to help us with our mortgage, which was inappropriate and it just the words that came across was that they didn't feel like we were doing well enough to provide for ourselves and I think they said to me direct that I'd never be as financially um, successful and capable as my brother so I think there's definitely some challenges going on with them and I don't mean to shame anyone publicly if this is put out into the public eye but it's it's not always been smooth sailing and I love them dearly, but I think that it's at the moment in life, they need to be focusing on um, being happy themselves. And I think the more that they focus on that, then the more that we can connect and have a happy relationship. So at the moment, they aren't in my life since the 1st of January. Um, and we'll just see how that goes because I'd love to have a relationship with them, but it's definitely the root of a lot of my life challenges mm, for sure yeah i understand if i can say it like that yes yes sir. <sighs> yeah, yeah yeah thanks for being so honest about it all um yeah if i asked them if i was talking to them and i said okay what's your what's your big complaint about tess or how do you want her to be different such that you you two would feel better what do you think they'd say 
they'd start to say that they have no complaints about me, that they love me and they've only ever wanted the best for me. But and then there'd be a, like maybe a list of buts. But I, I don't think um, it's complicated because I know that they do everything out of love. I do know that. I know that they have good intentions. It's just the behaviours that come across don't reflect that. They're not in alignment with that. Um, so I guess they'd say that they want me to be more independent and they want me to be happy. But if they looked at my life, they'd see that I have found those things. Mm -hmm. But they aren't in line with my adult self. They're seeing me as my child self. Mm -hmm. So they look at me and they see the troubled teenager that could not control or um, regulate her emotions and was shouty or really really hard to deal with or moody they don't see me as um like a really strong woman that works full time and has a home and a partner and is working towards a family like I don't think that they can be happy for that I feel like it almost reflects their lack of success or lack of personal happiness when I'm successful mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah 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 it's it's hard for parents in that way, mm. you know, to, to see their children when their children are in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, and more. Sometimes it's hard for them to see beyond, you know, some of the yeah. ideas that they formed earlier on. Uh, it's, it's, it's a challenge to grow mm. with our children. So, yeah, clearly... Clearly, that's that's something that they're facing. You know, mm. what strikes me is that in an odd way, the way you're describing your relationship with your parents has a has a little bit of similarity between you and your relationship with food. Yeah. <laughs> Here's what I mean, because where 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 I think you're at in your relationship with food is that there's this part of you that's the child. Yeah. And as a child, you ate food and you felt euphoria. Yeah. And so now, these days, a lot of times, if you eat enough food, you feel euphoric. And mm. despite the fact that I know I shouldn't be eating this or I should have eaten that or whatever it is, but there's a euphoria in there. And that's kind of like the kid in you. Mm -hmm. But there's also the adult Tess, who's becoming more and more of a woman, and you just want to be able to make choices and do behaviors and have a relationship with food that you know works for you. Yeah. And, and takes you where you want to go. So it's mm -hmm. almost like you're between those two worlds right now. You're not, <laughs> yeah. You're not 12 years old anymore. Yeah. But you're not the, you know, person that you you can likely be in another one, two, three, or four years from now. Mm. Yeah, so you're not. You're oh, not, in between. Yeah, you're in yeah. between the world. So yeah, that's you know, a really good description. So part of it is honestly, Tess, just acknowledging that that that's where you're at, and mm -hmm. it's a great place to be at because just. <laughs> In my conversation with you, you know, I, I, I want to say this again, you have such good insights into yourself. And Thank that, you. is, that is, that's at least half the work is mm. being able to look in the mirror and really see you and, oh, this is me and this is where I'm coming from. And mm. this is where some of these unwanted habits come from. Um, and, and here's where I want to go. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not quite there yet. So mm -hmm. you have your sights set on where you want to go. And I will, I, I'll bet all kinds of money that you're going to get. <laughs> so I have no doubts in you. I just want to say, that. yeah, <laughs> thank That's you. Great. Yeah. I feel the same. Yeah. Um, it's just the, like the stress and the frustration that I feel of like being in between and feeling torn like part of me it's like it is like butting heads with myself yeah so 
when I can get myself like both aspects of myself that are torn going in the same direction, I feel like I'll be able to move forwards like really quickly and get there. Like it, it would just be like none of this ever happened. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just not quite there yet, yet. Yeah. So, so working on it. So what I would love to see you do is to step one is just start to acknowledge to yourself and affirm to yourself on a regular basis I'm not yet there where I want to go and that's okay. Yeah. There's a part of you that really gets frustrated that you're not where you want to be. And Mm -hmm. that frustration is contributes, I think, to a good portion of your anxiety around Mm. the body. It's not all of it, but it's a big piece of it. Yeah. So yeah, you're going to have the same stresses that and the same anxieties that a lot of people have. The work anxieties, Mm -hmm. anxieties with my relationship with my parents, you know, building a family. So there's gonna be anxieties all the time and those are real. And Mm -hmm. there's also the optional ones. So Mm -hmm. it would be just really interesting for you to kind of give yourself the gift that you wish your parents would give you <laughs> yeah. which is, which is um, hey, we're okay with you for who you are. Like, we love you. We love this version of you. Like, I mm-hmm. see you right now, who you are, where you are, and, and we love this version of you. Can things get better? Sure. But things getting better for you is not going to make us love you more. And mm-hmm. you. Same for you. Can you start to, it's, it's less about loving your body. Yeah. And more about you being okay that you're not there yet. Yeah. That would be really valuable. (laughs) Yeah. So that's, that's a practice. That's a practice to remind Mm -hmm. yourself every day. Like, Hey, Tess, you have come a long way. Yeah. There's a part of you that gets a little bit extra focused on where you aren't. Mm. I'm not yeah, at the true. way I want to be. I am not at the relationship with food I want to be. I'm not yet where I want to get to. I want to have a baby, but I want to weigh less. And I want to feel like I'm doing something for my health, but I'm not there. And, and that's all true. And what I want to say is, okay, got it, <laughs> got it, yeah, <laughs> got it, and and look how far you've come. Mm. Look what you've created in your life. Mm. A wonderful relationship, great insights into yourself, a woman who's in a job where you're helping support yourself and you're building a foundation for your family, mm. and you're being happy when you're happy and you're in a partnership. That's really positive. Like that's amazing. Yeah. I'm gonna it's bet, an achievement. I'm going to bet that there's a lot of young women your age that don't have what you have right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm just, I'm just wanting to see you more give yourself what your parents can't give you right now and maybe couldn't give you. Yeah. And it's not because they're mean or anything wrong with them. It's just that's mm. who they are. And so now your job is to, in a strange way, kind of reparent yourself. Yeah. Give yourself yeah. what your parents couldn't or can't give you. Yeah. Which is right where you are right now is acceptable and is lovable. It's not where you want to be mm. yet, but we know you're moving in that direction. Yeah. Can you see the distinction there of focusing less on where you're not Mm. yet and relaxing a little bit more into, you know, I'm not doing so bad. Mm. I guess the challenge that I feel is that how can I do both? Like, how can I have that balance 
and also want to change because I feel like as soon as I want to change, I'm thinking about the reasons why I want to change, which is the fact that I'm not where I want to be. So it has that like focus on what's not right. Um, but I don't know how to do that, how to change things like while focusing on what is right. But I guess it comes back to like visualizing things in the way I want them rather than seeing what's not there. Um, it's complicated, but I guess it also is a personal journey in getting there. It's not um, complicated. I I want to I want to strike that word from the record for okay. you. It's not okay. easy. It's not easy, but I think it's yeah. it's simple in concept. It's not complicated in concept. So you mm -hmm. know you want to have a family, correct? Yeah. You don't have a family yet, but what are you doing? You're not going every day. Oh my God, I don't have a family. What's my issue? I don't have a baby yet. <laughs> I can't believe it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, no, you're not doing that. You're 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 no. building towards that. Yeah, that makes sense. You're not beating yourself up because you don't have it yet. You're mm. moving towards that. And granted, I know that's a little bit different from trying to grow out of, you know, difficulties with food and difficulties mm. in your body. I know it's different, but what I'm saying is there's a big similarity there. So yeah. it's, it's a paradox. It's you learning how to, how to be both at the same time, mm. which is give yourself credit when credit is due. Mm. And also respect yourself and honor yourself that you're not yet where you want to go. Once you have a baby and that baby is learning how to walk, and when your baby's learning how to walk, I promise you they're going to fall down. And yeah. If your baby falls down, you're not going to smack it. You're not going to yell at it. You're not going to want to return it to sender and get a baby that knows how to walk right off the bat. You're <laughs> going you're gonna to love your baby into learning how to walk. Yeah. That's and true. you can love you into having a better relationship with food right now, even though you stumble. Yeah, that's a really talking. good analogy for it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's just like breaking down the aspects of myself that feel like it's like the fact that I'm not yet there yet. I feel like it's disappointing to my parents. So realizing that it's okay is like telling myself that I'm not a disappointment, which is what I feel like is one of my inner dialogues is that I might be a disappointment to them or everything I've ever done is just because I want to, I want to be the best. And when they don't see that, I feel like I tell myself that it's because I'm not doing well enough mm -hmm. when it's more that just because someone can't see what's good about me, doesn't mean that it's not there. So. Bingo. You ah, thank you. It. You got it. That's it. <laughs> Yeah. And your partner sees the beauty in you and he sees yeah. the wonder in you. Yeah. And you see it when you see it. Yeah, when I see it. Yeah, and you don't when you don't. <sighs> yeah. Over here on my end, I see it. I'm I'm just I'm just so impressed that you've come this far as a 25 year old. Because I'm gonna <laughs> tell you I've I've worked with a lot of young people and a lot of young women. And the road can be really rocky for yeah. And it's not that it hasn't been rocky. It's just that I've I've worked at coming to this place, and I'm lucky that I've had the resources or the ability to find what I needed to get here. I'm really I feel really blessed for that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Definitely. So. Your job is to start making the affirmation that you're, you're not a disappointment. In fact, you're a success story. Mm. And really to start to see that in yourself. And, and it's hard because we want our parents to love us and we want them to love us for who we are. And we want them to see us for who we are. And sometimes they can't. 
Yeah. Um, and, and so your job as an adult is to step in, in your inner world and mm. make sure that, oh, I don't, I don't, I no longer need to repeat that mantra called mm. I'm a disappointment. Yeah. So that's how, that's one way, one way and one big way that you move forward, that you move yeah. in the direction where you want to go. Because if I'm walking around feeling like I'm a disappointment, I'm going to look for all kinds of ways to medicate. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. It's, yeah. that's just the reality of it. If I feel mm -hmm. I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, I'm going to look to find ways to medicate. And, mm -hmm. you know, the euphoria that you feel from food, on the one hand, it's a great thing because mm -hmm. it makes you human. Um, every animal is euphoric when they're eating. <laughs> Whether it's a cat, a dog, or a wild animal, it's... It's a euphoria for them. Every mm. little infant, you're, you're, you are not the only child who food became important for. Because yeah. Food is one of the places where we learn to control. We learn to order our world. Mm. Um, you know, you've seen young mothers and they're with their little babies and they try to feed the baby something and the baby like spits it out or they push it on the floor. And mm. the baby realizes, well, I got some power here. You know, yeah. In a strange way, yeah. that's one of the first places that the infant mind and the young mind learns that it can it can have some power. It can refuse. Yeah. Power. And then, often, yeah. you know, parents are then yeah. kind of, OK, what do we feed the baby? Mm. So all I'm saying is that. That the euphoria that you experience is human, it's real, it's natural. There's nothing wrong with it. And I want to suggest another practice for you. Mm. And I mean practice. When I asked you if you were a fast, moderate, or slow eater, you mentioned moderate to fast. And, you know, you tried that, really didn't work. Your habit took over. Um, mm. So it's a practice. It's not something you try and you go, yeah. oh, tried that. That didn't work. What else? <laughs> yeah. Now, when I say I would be very interested for you to become a slow eater, what I really mean is present, aware, indulging in all the sensations of the meal. Mm. Present, aware, receiving all the sensations, all the pleasure, all the goodness, and just, just taking in the whole experience. Yeah. What happens is part of the euphoria for you is has you, you've associated amount and speed of getting mm -hmm. that food in your system with the euphoria. Yeah. The food itself will make you feel good. So mm -hmm. I'm happy you feel good when you eat. I don't want you to take that away. Food is a great pleasure in life. Yeah. You know, we're designed to love food. So your mm -hmm. problem isn't loving food. Your mm -hmm. challenge right now is to evolve your relationship with it. Mm -hmm. And part of that means if you're going to be in good relationship with someone, let's say, you want to be present to them. Mm -hmm. You want to be aware. You want to listen to yeah. what they're saying. You want to just be in conversation. You want to be intimate with them. You want to get to know them. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is there's a certain, um, there's a, there's a brain state that mm -hmm. you go to. When I asked you earlier on in the conversation, I, I asked you, you know, how do you feel when you're like eating too much food? And you immediately said the word euphoria and your face yeah. just lit up. You're like yeah. a happy person. And yeah. so that was an experience. That was a, a brain state, a chemical state, a metabolic state, a nervous system state that you discovered as a child that really worked for you. Yeah. I'm glad you didn't go to drugs. I'm glad well. you went to heroin. 
Yeah, could have been worse. Yeah, really. Yeah. So, so right now you're unwinding that a bit and you're learning to let food be food, eat three meals a day, maybe a couple of snacks and mm -hmm. be in your womanly relationship with food. That's what you're creating right now. That's what you're moving towards. Mm -hmm. And the woman in you is different from the child in you. Mm -hmm. And you're inventing that as you go. Yeah. Along. You're inventing that as you go along. So it's a transition. Mm -hmm. So you're in a transition and you're transitioning from your relationship with food that you had as a child to your relationship with food that you're creating as a young woman. Mm -hmm. And as a young woman, you want to use food in a way that works for you. Mm -hmm. So one practice that helps you do that, and I really mean this, is you slowing down. And I don't care what you're eating. I don't care if you decide to eat a piece of cake, if you decide to eat a pie instead of a meal. I literally want you to go, okay, that guy said I should just slow down, relax. <laughs> and be present with this food. Yeah. That's gonna ask you to step into your adult self. Mm. The child in us can check out and do whatever we want. The big people will take care of things. Yeah. The adult That's what I want. <laughs> right, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. you're making that transition, understanding now that there's a part of you that's still that kid that just mm. wants to get that euphoric hit feel better about yourself, get rid of some of your anxiety. Mm -hmm. And it works, at least temporarily. And slowing down with food is going to help you learn about yourself. It will yeah. teach you. And mm -hmm. again, slowing down means I want to taste this. I want to receive pleasure from it. I want to notice this meal. I want to notice myself. How am I doing? Mm -hmm. How am I feeling? Yeah. Wow, yeah, it's so true. So I'm just asking you to be more present with you during a meal. You can be present with you in other other times very well. Mm -hmm. I bet you can be present with people really well. Yeah, working on it. Yeah. And when I'm so, not like on my phone or something, you know. Right. So you're it's really easy to go into other worlds for me, I guess, but it is also easy for me to be present. Yeah. So you're learning how to be more present when you're eating. So it's mm -hmm. literally you're invoking presence. So when you talk about, you know, your spiritual connection, if I put it in those terms, you are bringing your soul into your body mm. because there's a part of us that when we're being the child, in our relationship with food as an adult, there's a part of us that's not being present. Mm. So you're calling forth, you're bringing forth the woman that you're becoming, you're, you're literally calling her into your body. Mm. So your soul is evolving. You're calling mm. your evolving soul into your relationship into building a family, into the work that you're doing, into trying to heal your relationship with your parents, and you're mm. calling your evolving soul into your relationship with food. Mm. And it's not easy. It's, <laughs> it's yeah. just not easy. It's hard. And there's going to be moments when you're going to be frustrated. There's going to be moments where you do things that you look back and you wish you hadn't done. And those are the moments when... I would love for you to look back and go, oh yeah, I have to remember I'm in a transition and I'm not exactly mm -hmm. where I want to be. I'm like that little kid learning how to walk mm -hmm. and I could either smack myself for not doing it right and smack the little baby for not walking properly or mm -hmm. big hug, some love, big smile, and I'm going to try this again. I'm going to just, I'm mm -hmm. going to get back to myself again and not beat myself up. Mm. It's so relevant 
to me and like you mentioned earlier you asked me where I got so much awareness from I just realized as well with you talking about the child references um, I trained as a nanny so I'm a qualified nanny and home educator I'm not doing nannying at the moment but um, being able to do that for the children in my care and give them so much love and safety it did heal I think a lot of the inner child stuff for me um, it's just realizing that as an adult I don't have to have it all together yet is so important. I think that quite often I'm just in the mindset that I'm growing or I've had the narrative told to me that you're an adult, you're not my child anymore, you're a guest in this house, like you should have it together, you shouldn't be having these same issues anymore, you know, and I think that I had such a high expectation on myself that I forgot that it's all right to just be like still in transition with it and not to have it have all my shit together you know um because I think I just have so much pressure on myself to yeah to be the parent type of person um I feel like even I have to be the responsible one in my family relationships with my parents themselves so realizing that that's not my responsibility all of the time that I can still like be incomplete or in like in transition while I work towards things is quite a relief I feel like I can I can relax just knowing that it's right to you know to just be where I'm at is really important yeah transition to, you know it's you said that so beautifully and and you you just remind me that transition times anytime we go through any kind of life transition you know you buy a house you're moving from one place to another, you change jobs. Even if you're going from a job you hate to a job you love, transitions in general can be very stressful. Yeah. Transition times have a lot of uncertainty in them. Mm -hmm. Transition times often feel like we're taking two steps forward and you know two steps back maybe. Mm -hmm. And transition times are different from when we're on a little bit more cruise control. So- mm -hmm. I'm just reminding you that, that your relationship with food is still in a transition time and, mm. and it's, and transition times are wonderful because that's when the action starts, you know, mm. um, when I was a little kid, my, my uncle one day comes over the house, he was really into nature and he found <laughs> a cocoon, you know, mm. a, 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 a caterpillar had spun a cocoon. So it's mm -hmm. hanging, so it's on a little branch and my uncle has it in this big jar and he's explaining to me that this big caterpillar and he actually had another caterpillar in mm -hmm. the jar. He said, that caterpillar mm -hmm. thing that looks just like that, just spun this cocoon and it's gonna come out yeah. as a butterfly. And I remember yeah. thinking, wow, I just, I just can't believe that. So yeah. when I'm a little kid he leaves it at the house. And of course, what do I do? I open it up. Mm. And when I open it up, which you're kind of not supposed to do, because um, <laughs> I ended up killing the thing, but yeah. what I saw was a bunch of mush inside that cocoon. It's just mushy. There's no caterpillar, yeah. there, nor is there a butterfly. There's a stage mm. when the caterpillar is metamorphosizing into a butterfly there's a stage where it ain't a caterpillar and it ain't a butterfly <laughs> to your eye and my eye. It looks like a bunch of mush. Yeah. Um, but there's a, but there's a butterfly coming out the other end at some point. Yeah. And all I'm saying is that, you know, in a transition time, it could be a little mushy. Mm. <laughs> it could be a yep. little mushy and it's okay. Yeah. It's okay because you've gotten this far. And there's a part of you that knows you're going to get where you want to go. And that's what you're going to remind yourself of during the difficult times that, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm in a transition. It's a little mushy. It's a little messy. Something good's going to come out. I'm not a disappointment. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're just learning how to not be just your parents child anymore you're learning how to be your own woman yeah so it almost makes sense to me that there's sort of an unofficial time out between you and your parents 
because mm. you're individuating, you're really trying to feel, okay, what's me and what's you guys? Yeah. And I think that's really healthy. I get that as difficult, but I think you're doing a really healthy thing. Thank you. Yeah, I think so. I've got the right intentions in mind behind it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a really good metaphor about the butterfly um, and the caterpillar. I think even though obviously it wasn't ideal to kill the thing, it was a really good experience for you to learn that so that you can teach that and um, help us understand ourselves on that level as the transformation's occurring because we don't always know when we're in something, what's going on until we look back at it from the future and see it in hindsight. So, yeah, it's it's great to look at each stage of where things are and um, just be like be able to be present with each stage because that's probably the way that you can get through it quicker mm -hmm. or in time, you know, yes. um, with presence. So it's good reminders. Yes. So one last time I want to remind you just start to practice slower present eating and yeah. just be with yourself and just say to yourself, you know, I'm going to bring in the woman in me when I eat. Mm. Now yeah. that doesn't mean that there aren't times when you're going to go, you know, something, I don't want to do that right now. I don't want to bring in the woman in me. I want to bring in the child in me. If you want to do that, yeah. so full permission, do it and see how it feels. Mm. So there's no harm in that. There's no shame in that because as adults, you know, we're going to have fun with food when we have fun and mm. you're going to overeat when you overeat sometimes. Mm. And so just giving yourself the opportunity to play with that transition a little more. Yeah. Mm. And see what you learn. Mm. And yeah. see if you can come up with an affirmation for yourself that's the opposite of I'm a disappointment. Mm. Like, hey, yes. yeah. I've been on a pretty successful journey here, all things considered. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's valuable. I'll think about that for sure. I've had some ideas just pop into my head about the practical aspects of eating and I can kind of see myself and how I'd fit that into my work day just after talking through it. So I've got some, I feel like I've got some, um, some ideas to work from, from the practical aspects as well as, as enjoying it. I guess I just saw myself enjoying it, enjoying the food that I have at work and things. So that would, that would be everything if I could get there, which yeah. I can, if I can see it, then I can believe it, you know? So i feel like I'm working towards that now. Yeah. And for now, I would say, I would suggest to you that you don't need to do intense dietary restrictions, mm. meaning no bread, you know, yeah. no fun foods. No, I yeah. want you to feel like you can eat a meal and go, you know, that's satisfying. Yeah. It might not be as satisfying as eating some like awesome dessert, but you know, for a <laughs> meal that was satisfying. Yeah. Part of the satisfaction is being present. Mm. Because without presence, we're not home. Yeah, that's true. Your soul's not in your body. You're not registering sensation. And mm. then you can't get the euphoria that can happen really from any meal. Yeah. Snack. Just anything at all. Yeah. That's really true. I think I was looking at it. Well, my child self was looking at it like, this thing will do it. This thing will do it. Only this thing will do it. But actually, you're right. It's um, it's the state of being present with eating itself, not the food that's going to give me the satisfaction that I'm looking for. Yeah. And present not just with the food, but then you're being present with yourself and present with your body. And you're mm. experiencing how it feels in you. And you're really noticing sensations even more. Because yeah. a lot of times we just don't notice the simple sensations that would give us pleasure. Mm. Because yeah. 
if I'm just eating a large amount of fun food, it's almost like I can't miss the sensation. It's right in my face. It's a, yeah. it's like, boom, there it is. A lot of fun yeah. food and you're going to get the sensation. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, I don't know. It's like going to a horror movie in a weird way because some people like get so stimulated by like the thrill or, yeah. and, and so it's learning how to get pleasure from maybe a horror movie wasn't a good analogy, learning how to get pleasure from things that are more subtle. Yeah. And this is a practice. So mm. slowing down helps us in that practice. Yeah. I guess like seeing, uh, understanding that people do things for a thrill, like seeing horror because it gives you the thrill. It's like you can find that in the simple things as well. Yeah. And just your daily coffee or just like walking around the block in your lunch break or something, you know, like, it, yeah, it being present when anything can give you that same sense if you're ready to be like able to explore it, I guess. Yeah. That's what I would take from it. Great. Good for you. <sighs> How you doing right now, Tess? Good. Yeah, I feel really good. Yeah, I'm really glad. grateful. I I'm very confident that you're going to get where you want to go. I really am. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, definitely. I appreciate where you're at right now, and and yeah, and you're doing the work, and it and it yeah. is, is work. It's work. It's work, and it's not always fun work, and mm. that's a sign, a big sign that you're stepping into your womanhood in a powerful way when you're willing to do work that's not so easy sometimes because mm -hmm. that's what being an adult is. That's what being a mother is. That's yeah. what being a partner is. That's true. Ah, oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Tess, great job. I'm so really. glad that we got to have a conversation together. Yeah, I'm really glad too. And thanks for taking the time to chat to me and be interested in my life. I feel like it's really helped me a lot oh, and so it will glad. continue to. So thank you. Thanks. That makes my day. Yeah. And thanks Me everybody too. for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Once again, I'm Mark David. We've been in the Psychology of Eating podcast. More to come, my friends. Take care. Hey, friends. We're so happy that you've joined us for another episode of the Psychology of Eating with Mark David. Are you loving these episodes? Then simply subscribe and you'll never miss an episode again. We'd also love it if you'd leave us a comment below so we can hear more about your own journey with food and body. And if you're curious about what we offer at the Institute for the Psychology of Eating, including our internationally acclaimed coach certification training that's rooted in dynamic eating psychology and mind-body nutrition, please head on over to our website, psychologyofeating.com. Until next time, take care. And remember, having the body you want starts with loving the body you have.